Micron came out, right? We're used to like $20 billion commitments, uh, $60 billion commitments over five years. Micron came out with a $150 billion commitment over 10 years for uh, what they described to lean into memory. And it'll be memory and storage, but it's easier, I think, just to say memory. But let me, let me just give a little backdrop of, you know, aside from the number, uh, why memory is gonna be so important. So uh, uh, first off uh, on the consumer side, if you want faster twitch of applications, you want it in memory. You want more memory. We see it in PCs. We see it in in smartphones. Uh, you know, Apple came out. You know, albeit uh, a different kind of memory, uh, sixty four gigs uh, just on the Mac uh, MacBook Pro, uh, the sixteen and the fourteen inch. Uh, and also, what we see in in semiconductors is that due to Moore's law. Uh, and the the lack of ability to crank out these massive uh, die products, uh, HBM becomes the interconnect between, let's say, the CPU and the GPU or the FPGA. We see it with Xilinx. I mean, we see it with high-end uh, data center graphics cards, uh, the ability to, to connect those things uh, together. But the opportunity is even bigger, Daniel, uh, in the data center. So, so today, right, we can offload uh, networking, uh, we can offload the CPU, and we can offload uh, storage. And, and what I mean by offload is, is you disaggregate it, right? It's not all one thing, and you can leverage it as one fungible asset. But the one remaining thing, right, that you can't... Uh, composed today in the data center is memory. If you want more memory for an application, you can do it the slow way over a technology called RDMA, uh, which you know goes at the speed of, of basically of a network card, which is which is too too slow. And that that enables you to take what might be a scale up application and, and scale out. Uh, but if you need more memory, you need to buy a new CPU. Right, because this CPU is is linked uh, with with memory. I had a great conversation uh, with the gentleman at Micron, Raj Hazra, who runs uh, memory uh, over there, and I also had a great conversation with Jeremy, who uh, runs storage. But this new technology called CXL uh, is going to enable hyperscale data centers, AWS, Azure, GCP, IBM. Oracle to compose memory. And I've talked to all of them, Daniel, and they are super excited uh, about this technology, although none of them are publicly talking about it, although every one of them could do that. I believe that is going to enable just an absolute boom uh, for Micron, which again leads to uh, the requirement to, to invest $150 billion into fabs and i'll end with the customer sorry micron wasn't specific on where they're going to get the money but they were absolutely saying like intel that uh they're going to look to uh the governments uh to to dig into that uh for the very important reason of supply chain and national security and whether that's national security in the united states or over in western europe uh, or for, uh, for that matter, in, in Southeast Asia, uh, everybody wants their own fabs. Yeah, you make a great series of points there, Pat. Uh, the $52 billion or so that was, uh, I, think, I think, put in the Senate's bill that's still sitting in the House, hasn't passed, certainly isn't going to cover all this investment. I also believe the amount of investment that has been put forth in the various um, you know, infrastructure bills for semiconductors simply isn't enough. The consensus globally is that some, if not much, uh, more semiconductor manufacturing, especially at the leading edge, uh, needs to be done here in the U.S., where effectively we're doing zero right now, if you don't count stuff that's being built either for self-purposes. Because I know IBM builds some of their own for themselves, but they're not actually building for anyone else anymore. Techni technically, 12% in the U.S., but that's not leading edge. Leading right, edge that's what I meant. Zero leading yeah. edge. Sorry, 12% total semiconductor yeah. manufacturing. Now, we do have Samsung 
and TSM and Intel broke ground on their additional fabs. There are things happening. This is multiple year process. And to your point, Pat, 30% of the semiconductor market is memory and storage. And these are different. It's a different process than, than CPUs. And so, you know, I always like to say memories and storage don't get a lot of uh, affection the way GPUs and high powered CPUs uh, often are fun to talk about, Pat, but try running an application without memory and storage and see how that works for you. It's kind of like when uh, I, to I told you about, you know, being challenged that semiconductors are not eating the world. And then you said to me, what are you going to run your apps on air? I mean, <laughs> look, this is this is the world that we live in is is this is an opportunity. You know, going back full circle to the Intel conversation, look, Gelsinger gets the one thing is that we need to be able to make more semiconductors. Even yeah. if Intel can't grow its TAM on all of its different products, they can make money manufacturing chips for these other companies that are growing. Um, right. They've already showed they won the ramp business with the federal government. Absolutely. Uh, guess what? It, AWS and, any, and a lot of vendors who have not spoken up will have to fab their stuff uh, at Intel. It's going to be a public opinion thing, Pat. How do you not work with a U.S.-based company that's creating U.S.-based jobs? And by the way, that's part of the story here with Micron. Is not only is it about you know manufacturing more and being opportunistic to make money. It's about doing good for this supply chain issue. You know, you're going to do more R&D. You're going to create more jobs. You're going to um, you know. By the way, this company's based in Boise. It's not a. It's not a. Um, you know, San Jose. They're they're actually distributing the tech around the world. And part of the reason I think sometimes they don't get as much coverage is because they're in Boise. By the way, beautiful part of the world. You should visit it if you haven't been there. Um, there. I'd go there over San Francisco anytime. No offense, San Francisco. Actually, take it for what you will. Um, but <laughs> truth be told, good stuff for Micron. The company is on the rise. It's got uh, you know some serious competition, but it's actually not as competitive as, as I would say some of this stuff in, in CPU and GPU is right now. And Micron's doing doing very well. And it's good to see this, Pat. It's good to see the company stepping up. I am going to be interested to watch where $150 billion comes from. But, you know, Pat, I, 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 the long tail gives the company time to create that cash flow, create that growth. And we all know one thing, computing isn't slowing and therefore memory and storage won't slow either.